I'm Ernie Bjorkman. We're going to tell you how the team plans to win with the fans. And it's terrific tundra, and it could be Klondike and Snow's new home. The news is next. It's 10 o'clock. You're watching KMGH-TV. Live from Denver, this is Colorado 7 News with Bertha Lynn, Ernie Bjorkman, Jeff Passel on Sports, and meteorologist Pam Dale with your first forecast. Colorado 7 News starts now. Denver gets a second shot at supporting a National League hockey team. The business of promoting the team already has moved into high gear. This ad will be in all the newspapers tomorrow. Denver now joins nine other metropolitan areas with four major professional sports teams. Our team coverage begins with details of the Nordiques deal. We'll get a look at the marketing blitz already underway in Denver. And we'll talk about, yes, the cost. How much more you're going to pay to see National Hockey League hockey. But we begin with our man in sports. He's here to tell us more about this deal, Jeff. Yeah, we uh, told you first about it last night, and here we go again. When talk of an NHL return to Denver started six months ago, most figured it would be by way of expansion. But now we've jumped on the fast track of pro sports. Denver scored today and scored big. In Quebec today, former Nordiques owner Marcel Abou delivered the news. The Nordiques had been sold for $75 million and were headed for Denver. An announcement that drew obvious anger from fans in Canada. But at ComSat headquarters in Maryland, the man responsible for making the deal was all smiles. This came together literally in a week. I mean, Marcel called me a week ago and said that I'm ready to sell if you're ready to buy. And it wasn't until 6.30 last night that we signed and the deal was approved today. The move means that rather than wait for an expansion club to mature into a contender, Denver fans will get an established team that finished with the second best record in the NHL this year. I think it's going to make a great difference in the entertainment product and the immediate attachment that the fans have with the team. Uh, these are great kids. Uh, they're very competitive. They're very tough. And I think uh, they're going to love Denver and Denver's going to love them. As for a new team name, Lions seem to like our idea. Call them the Coyotes. That way, fans can howl after they score. <laughs> That's, see, uh, you got a point. <laughs> see, like that idea. Lyons also said he doesn't plan on making any other announcements in Denver until after the move gets approval from the NHL owners. That's considered nothing more than a formality and will come June 21st at NHL meetings in New York. And then at that time, they'll bring the coach and the general manager and some of the players into town and get them acclimated, uh, as well as getting some of the fans acclimated to seeing these National Hockey League players. Because we all know the Grizzlies have done so well so yeah. far. Going to take a step up here. You're going to see a good team. And the uh, real estate agents will be circling. Yeah, they sure <laughs> will. We're going to talk more on. about uh, how good this uh, Nordiques team is later on in sports, too, because they are talented. One sports official in town made this analogy. They are a lot like the Orlando Magic in basketball. Imagine getting a team like that. That's how much talent this team has. I'm not trying to build it up too much for you. I'm just mm -hmm. telling you the, the cold, hard facts. They are a good club because they struggled for so long, mm -hmm. got all these top draft picks, and they saved all of them and used them all to get good players. Got the hot guy from Sweden. Yes, right? Peter Forsberg. Peter Forsberg. Mm -hmm. Something for you to get excited <laughs> That's about. That's right. In That's particular. Right. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Jeff. Talk thanks, to you Jeff. later. Okay. Well, if approved, and probably will be approved, the Nordiques will play next season at McNichols Arena. The next year, they're going to move to ComSat's Pepsi Center Complex. That facility will be located in Lower Downtown, across from Elages. ComSat hopes to break ground this July. Hockey fans used to, used to inexpensive ticket prices may be shocked to hear what they're going to be now paying to watch National League games. Right now, the average price for a Grizzlies ticket is about $10. The average price for the Nordiques, $33. But fans we talked to tonight don't seem too concerned about the extra cost. If they, the same thing as the Rockies, they start charging higher prices to go to see the Rockies, I will go see them. The Broncos, I go see them. The Nuggets, I go see them. T ticket prices are not any problem. Look at the Rockies. They came and we raised the price of tickets and we sold out. I think hockey is due in Colorado and we raised the ticket prices and people will come and we will fill the arena. You're going to see people like Messier and Gretzky coming, a lot of big-name uh, people, players. I'm really excited about it. So it seems that the fans are ready to roll out the red carpet for our new hockey team. Many believe NHL, NHL hockey is just what the city needs to complete its image. 
When people got word of the Nordiques move, the phone lines began to light up at McNichols Arena with fans inquiring about the tickets. And here's the new team owner's policy. Priority will be given to Denver Grizzlies season ticket holders, as well as those with Denver Nuggets season tickets. And fan plan holders. Those ticket holders will get a special mailing, and they can reserve tickets with a $200 refundable deposit per seat. The general public also can reserve seats by going to Big Mac, or you can call 575-1900 during regular business hours. Within hours of the Nordique's announcement, a marketing blitz shifted into high gear. Mark Hayes is in our Channel 7 newsroom with more on how the team already has begun to promote itself. Mark? Well, Bertha, the game is fast and furious, mixing finesse with brute force, and the marketing strategy is no different. The marketing blitz will begin tomorrow morning when your early edition of the Rocky Mountain News arrives hot off the presses. Pro hockey is on its way to the Mile High City. Question is, how do you sell it? Scores! We're going to get loud quick. Colorado NHL may help you. Word spread quickly about the arrival of the NHL to Denver. Thousands of calls flooded ticket offices today. And your name? I don't think you'll find a sports market anywhere in the world like Denver and Colorado. So you can kiss hockey hello. And you won't be able to miss this full-page ad in tomorrow morning's Rocky Mountain News. Best thing that's happened to Denver sports. For now, the only checks being passed yes. out are checks for season tickets. But can the Denver market support for professional sports franchises? If it said Nordiques on it, people have grabbed it. it. Money has been no object. Denver's new hockey franchise will also have to claw its way into the Denver sports merchandising market. It's the only thing left now are some pennants. So far, so good. No more Nordique stuff on the shelves. But battling the successful sales of the Rockies, the new hockey franchise hopes not to be singing the blues. When the Grizzlies started, every day somebody came in for a jacket, a hat, a shirt, a sweatshirt. Um, it's been that way today with the Nordiques merchandise. It's uh, going to catch on like wildfire. The marketing blitz will also include television and radio ads. Word of mouth will also be very effective. But this team will be the only pro hockey team in the entire time zone. So they want to reach out to the entire Rocky Mountain region. Bertha? Mark, we heard Charlie Lyon say that he only got the call a week ago. How were they able to get this marketing strategy in place so quickly? Well, this didn't come as a surprise to ComSat and the Nuggets organization. They've had a strategy in place now for some 60 days. So they are ready to get their message out. All right. They weren't waiting around. Thank you, Mark, for that report. Well, the bottom line tonight, the Nordiques move to Denver is expected to be a big boon for the area with an infusion of revenue in the tens of millions of dollars. One sports financial expert estimates that the team should spread at least $30 million throughout the local economy during its first year alone. In other news tonight, a Texas businessman angered Jefferson County authorities today by flying a commuter plane out of Jeffco Airport without their permission. John Andrews is trying to establish commuter service here in the Denver area. This morning, he got tired of waiting, so he sent his Centennial Express plane to Grand Junction, hoping to force the local airport to set some standards for commuter airlines. Eventually, you will see the, uh, the uh, service unless they change the federal law, and I, I don't think they're going to change the federal law. This is just a big deal that shouldn't have been a big deal to start with. Jeffco Airport says Andrews was not authorized to do what he did. The businessman promises he'll hold off on further flights until he's had a chance to talk to the airport once again. NATO planes invaded Bosnian airspace today. It marked a major escalation of international involvement in that three-year war. More in our world in a minute. NATO warplanes bombed an ammunition dump in Bosnia today in response to Serb shelling in Sarajevo. The action involved six planes, some of them American. Another reason for the attack? Serb refusal to return several pieces of heavy weaponry to UN-guarded sites. The NATO airstrike sent people in Pali running for cover as air raids sounded overhead. Bosnian Serbs fire anti-aircraft guns but fail to hit the NATO jets. NATO said the attack was successful. The U.S. Army unveiled its newest attack helicopter today with ceremonies in Stratford, Connecticut. The RAH-66 Comanche is the world's first stealth helicopter, designed to be virtually invisible to enemy radar and heat-seeking weapons. 
You wouldn't think an old tape of two teens playing 50s rock would be worth much, but when the teens were Mick Jagger and Keith Richards, it can become a very desirable item. The tape went for $80,000 at an auction at Christie's. And that's World in a Minute. Tune to the present. It's a big night for rock and roll right here in the Rockies. And R.E.M. takes center stage. We've got it all coming up in the seventh spotlight. Musical chairs in the courtroom. More upheaval in the Simpson trial. And it's being called Polar Paradise. And it could be Klondike and Snow's new home. And will Sunshine make a return for the weekend? I'll have the details coming up in weather. Tonight on The Late Show with David Letterman, don't miss Ringo Starr plus Clint Black. I'm going to tell you something, folks. Tonight's show is more fun than a roll of bubble wrap. It seemed good. And still ahead tonight, Joey Buttafuoco caught in a police sting in L.A. In Detroit, police can't believe what they find. Marijuana and money. Lots of it. And Wind Machine breezes into town with some new music. Mother Nature, though, has been singing the same old song all week long. Stormy weather. Is she about to change her tune? Well, Nancy David has our first forecast. I think she is. I think uh, with all the phone calls that we've been getting into the weather office, I had to make the call myself. I said, hey, Mother Nature, come on. <laughs> Let's get with it. I mean, I can't handle all these calls. Let's get some sunshine, and I think we're going to be able to do that. But temperature-wise, out there right now, we're not doing too bad. We have a temperature reading of 46 degrees. But first, before we talk about our high, well, we're going to talk about what happened earlier today in Denver. Not too nice of a day to be out and about, but nonetheless, improvements are in the forecast. Now, temperature-wise, 46 degrees. The wind is out of the southeast at 7. Our relative humidity, 96%. It's kind of high, so I think we may be seeing some fog developing overnight. And our barometer is rising. Our high for today was 58 degrees, but it, was, it seemed much cooler because we saw lack of sunshine. And our morning low is right around 40 degrees. But across the neighborhoods, let's check the temperatures, generally in the 30s in the high country. But we're finding 40s pretty much everywhere else. Up in Golden, 40 degrees right now. Inglewood, 46. And Longmount, 48. And we're looking at Loveland, 46 as well. And Fort Collins checking in with that 46 as well. But as I told you, we've been getting lots of calls into the weather office. A lot of folks are saying, we want the sunshine back. But we're not going to be able to do that just yet. We do have the clouds. They are continuing to hang in here. A few breaks in the overcast, but I think sky should be partly to most cloudy tonight and we will see another day in the clouds tomorrow but it's going to be one of those cloud sort of mixture sunshine type deals that's going to happen but basically here's the situation that is setting up a lot of ingredients coming together and it spells out showers and thunderstorms they're just still out here but they should be dissipating throughout the early morning hours we need this system to get out of here it will eventually start to work its way eastward and that means sunshine will make a return by saturday here's the situation right now though we are finding scattered showers throughout the eastern part of the state up in the high country, we're looking at a little bit of snow. The snow level is right around 9,000 feet. Could be picking up a couple inches of snow here. But all this stuff is working to the northeast at about 25 miles an hour. So it should be out of here probably later on. As far as the forecast for tomorrow, well... We're looking at more cloud cover across the state, mostly cloudy skies, but we will see some sunshine, but the significant sunshine will make a return by Saturday. But the good news here is temperatures will be warming. We're looking at 60s and maybe 70s across the west. How about Denver for tonight? 41 degrees and those showers, if they're out there, they will be ending our low right around 41 degrees and a mostly cloudy skies. Then for tomorrow, 63 will be our high, partly sunny skies. There is a chance for some afternoon showers and storms. And if you're planning your holiday weekend, it's not looking too bad. You might want to plan a little bit in the morning because by the afternoon, we're looking at a chance for showers and maybe even a few thunderstorms. But by Tuesday, we're looking at 74 degrees, more sunshine, and a warming trend is in the forecast. Okay, nice job. Yeah. It's nice to have you here tonight. It's we nice should, to be here. We should mention that uh, Pam Dale has the night off, so we're... Mm -hmm. Glad you could make it. That's right, and I'll be here tomorrow as well. Okay, thank you See very you much, Nancy. Right. Nancy. Well, sun or not, Friday's nearly here, so have you planned your weekend yet? No. We have the scoop, though, on what's going on in entertainment this weekend, and reporter Bill Clark is here with 7 Spotlight. Bill? Hi there. Hey, Hi. how you doing? Hey, listen, I'm doing well, and boy, we've got an incredible week coming up. One of the hottest tickets this summer, one of the hottest concerts, comes on one of the coldest nights of the season. One of the best-known local bands celebrates release of its 10th album tonight in Boulder. The band R.E.M. wrapped up a two-night stand at Fiddler's Green this evening. It's been about five years since this band from Georgia hit the concert trail. Denver's one of the first dates R.E.M. is playing here in the States. Audiences love them, but tonight at Fiddler's, there was enough distortion in the sound system to fry a good set of ears. 
At the Boulder Theater tonight, one of the best-selling local groups is holding a party for the release of its latest CD. It's a band that's become a big success nationally. The band called Wind Machine has been around for nine years, riding a wave of popularity generated by easy jazz and radio stations leaning heavily on instrumental music. Yeah, we've been real fortunate with radio. Um, our Road to Freedom CD, the, the title cut to that CD was the number one most played cut in the country for a while. We, all our CDs have been in the top five nationally. <laughs> Anything else you guys want to try? You want to play? Uh... Founding member Steve Mesplay says being tagged a new age band may have helped Selwyn Machine at first, but it's been a problem since. It seems to be the listening public's perception at times that what we do are these just real dreamy, beautiful ballads. And I'm always going, that's, that's about 5% of what this band is. A switch to their own record label a few years back gave the members of Wind Machine a way to shed that image for good. I wish that somebody would take these blues with me. If we want to do a CD with some vocal tunes, we don't have somebody saying, you know, that really doesn't fit your sound. Congratulations to Wind Machine. The new album is out today, and the next album will have the blues song on it. On the weekend concert calendar tomorrow and Saturday, Colorado Symphony Orchestra conductor Marin Alsop performs with a jazz swing ensemble called String Fever. Stapleton Airport rocks this Sunday with Leonard Skinner, Foreigner, and a whole bunch more. And tomorrow, tickets go on sale for Chris Isaac coming to the Paramount Theater next month. At the movies! Mad Love with Chris O'Donnell and Drew Barrymore tomorrow. Also a bizarre science fiction tale called Johnny Mnemonic with Keanu Reeves and Casper the Friendly Ghost from the old comic book. Mel Gibson opened in Braveheart yesterday to good reviews and a huge promotional campaign. Gibson gets high marks as a director in this one. And that's the 7 Spotlight. For a complete rundown of what's happening this weekend, check the Spotlight section in tomorrow's Rocky Mountain News. Ernie and Bertha, back to you. Okay. okay. That's a pretty neat necklace you're wearing there, Bill. Thanks. Tags. This is the backstage pass for uh, Fiddler's Green and uh, Red Rocks. Uh, Very valuable. I'm sorry, I just forgot to take right. it off. That's By right. the way, I saw a movie this week, Gordy, the Talking Pig. You left that out of your movie reviews. Uh, actually, I did mention it a couple of weeks ago when it first came out. All right, what'd you think of it? Starring nobody that anybody's ever what'd heard of. What'd you think of it? <laughs> the pig was great. Okay. The pig was great, Bill. <laughs> It's Thanks. good to know. Thanks, Bill. <laughs> well, Buttafuoco is back, and it's not good news. Busted in L.A. We'll give you the latest next. And then there were four. They are running out of reserves in the Simpson trial. <laughs> <laughs> there they are. And uh, Klondike and Snow may soon have some cool new neighbors. We'll show you. <laughs> in the beginning. See your local Jeep and Eagle dealer. A big shakeup in the O.J. Simpson case tonight. Another juror is dismissed. There's no word yet on who or why he or she was let go, but there are now only four alternate jurors left with more than uh, several months' testimony expected. No sale and back to jail for a Florida woman who allegedly tried to trade her baby for a used car. Police say Betty Tullis wanted to swap her three-month-old child for a 1985 Honda, and Ernie Tullis had just been released from jail for mm. check fraud. Unbelievable. Well, police in Detroit have never seen anything quite like it, a one-stop pot shop. It's a massive marijuana factory inside an abandoned apartment building. They found everything dealers need to plant, produce, package, and push pot. They also found $60,000 in cash. New legal trouble for Joey Buttafuoco. He was arrested last night in L.A. in a prostitution sting. He's free on his own recognizance tonight. His wife says it's a big setup. Buttafuoco was convicted of the statutory rape of the Long Island Lolita, Amy Fisher. I wonder if uh, Mr. Letterman. Leonard, uh, Mr. Letterman, no, exactly, is going to have something to say about this <laughs> oh, tonight. Oh, I think he will. I would Leno too, so. probably. Yes. You going to talk hockey again? Yeah, we got a little right. bit of that. Also coming up, uh, an NBA magic trick in Orlando. More on the Nordiques move. And a chat with the old NHL Rockies coach, Don Cherry. Looking back at hockey's last go-round in Denver. That and more coming up in sports. For three big days, this Friday, Saturday, and Monday in O'Mara, we've selected two of our most popular vehicles, Escort and Ranger, for a very special offer. $80 down, $80 a month for Ranger or Escort. Your choice. 
Real vehicles, real value, equipped just the way you want. Like Escort, dual airbags, rear spoiler, aluminum wheels, and AM FM stereo cassettes. Escort and Range are just $80 down at O'Mara Ford Center, 104th and I-25. At Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries, the things our chairs can do go. In short, your choice will do anything but just sit there. Right now at Lazy Boy Furniture Galleries, you can save on every piece of furniture on our floor. The choices, as you can see, go on and on. We wish we could say the same about the offer. Don't miss big savings during our Memorial Day sale at all Metro Denver and Fort Collins locations. I thought I'd save some money if I gave myself to you. I thought I'd save some money and I trusted in you too. But your basic rate for calls is the highest of them all. AT&T savings. It just doesn't ring true. <laughs> what does it take to own the road? It takes the power of a 205 horsepower V6. It takes the confidence of anti-lock brakes and dual airbags. 24-hour roadside assistance and free courtesy transportation. It takes the control of power windows and locks, cruise control, and air conditioning. So what does it take to own the road? Pontiac Bonneville. Now an even better value. $2.99 a month, 36 months. $2.99 a month, 36 months. See your Colorado Pontiac excitement team. Colorado 7 weather is brought to you by John Elway Ford. Conveniently located in Denver on Colfax at Colorado Boulevard, where you can always catch your best deal. Somebody asked me a very good question tonight. I couldn't answer it. How many home games do the hockey teams play if you $33 per ticket? Uh, 41 home games. Uh, they play an 84-game schedule. But two of those games are at neutral sites as they continue to try and expose their league to yeah. other markets. Mm -hmm. so about, How so does that 41? compare to basketball or well, basketball? Basketball is 40-41 uh, and uh, baseball, well, this year, 72. Yeah. But normally, uh, 81 games. Okay. So, yeah. There's your uh, comparison. Denver's goal of returning to the National Hockey League came true sooner than most expected, but when ComSat realized they had a chance to get a team like the Nordiques, they jumped at it. So along with Marcel Abou, we won't be the most popular topic in Quebec. The fans there realize they've lost what many call the most talented young team in the National Hockey League. With NHL Coach of the Year Mark Crawford, Rookie of the Year Peter Forsberg, and all sorts of other talent now calling Denver home. There's not much I can do about it. I got to play wherever uh, you know the team goes. He scored for the rebound. You know you've got to move on. Uh, there's not much you can do about it. This is an outstanding young team with a lot of young talent, uh, with an outstanding coach who was named NHL Coach of the Year. We fully expect to be competitive for the Stanley Cup championship race in the next year or two. That wouldn't have happened with an expansion team. And you know there's an old song about things being better the second time around. Remember what it was like the last time the NHL was here? If not, Kurt Sandoval takes a look back at the original Colorado Rockies. The sign says it's here. It should say it's back. It's been 13 years since the National Hockey League skated in Denver. Former coach Don Cherry told me today this was and still is a hockey town. But they're great people out there. I remember, I remember we'd go off the ice and we'd lose about four in a row. And uh, they don't worry, Grapes, we'll get them and get them. Rocky Hockey first stepped into McNichols Sports Arena in 1976. They spent seven seasons in Denver with seven head coaches and three owners. What was your thought, Don, in hindsight of why it didn't work here the first time? Well, it was planned disaster. How could the people support it when they said he was going to pull the team every two weeks? In 1982, Rocky Hockey headed to New Jersey for a $30 million price tag. In a state that has a lot of pride and has a lot of spirit and has a lot of uh, appeal, uh, everybody loses. When Rocky Hockey was on the same ice in the late 70s and early 80s, the average ticket was $9, and season ticket holders were outraged when it increased to $11. Now that same ticket will cost $33. So if you're wondering, will hockey survive again in Denver? The experts say yes. I got a feeling that maybe the marketing resources weren't there, uh, maybe the commitment from ownership wasn't there. Always remember, Kirk, remember this. 
We were the first professional team to play Gary Glitter Rock and Roll Part 2. Time will tell if hockey is here to stay. Kurt Sandoval, Colorado 7 Sports. I have a feeling we're going to be hearing that song some more. It's break time, but NHL playoff action is coming up, along with Game 2 of the NBA playoffs in Orlando. So stay tuned for more sports. Let's make a little room for the newest Ford dealer in town. Here's Johnny. John Elway is smashing into the Ford business on Colfax at Colorado and knocking down prices for the biggest liquidation sale ever. They all gotta go. Over 600 new and used Fords must be sold. Ooh, somebody stop me. <laughs> hey, it's easy to get here. Here's Colorado. Here's Colfax. Here's John Elway Ford. Hey, what's this one do? <laughs> Imagine. Imagine a new store with national brands at half price every day. Imagine the possibilities, the newest fashions for you and your family. Furnishings for your home at half price every day. Imagine never paying full price again. Imagination becomes reality this weekend in Lakewood. The grand opening of your new half price store. Because why pay full price when you can get it at half price? Need new tires in a hurry? At Discount Tire Company, we move fast. Except when it comes to closing our doors. Slide in for a new set of Michelin at Discount Tire Company. Forget Paris is the summer's funniest romantic comedy. This is Billy Crystal at his best. Touching, funny, unforgettable. Siskel and Ebert give it two thumbs up. Forget Paris. Rated PG-13. Now playing. Hello? It's me, your TV. Pardon the interruption, but this might interest the both of us. A truck and TV value from your GMC truck dealer and Best Buy stores. Look, now when you buy a 95 GMC Sierra, already a great value with all these great features, we'll get a color TV from Best Buy, the leading electronics store. A little buddy from Best Buy for me, a new truck for you. But this truck and TV value will both be set. <laughs> Anyway, see your Colorado GMC truck dealer and ask about the truck and TV value today. Welcome back, everybody. Another great ball game in the NBA playoffs tonight. Orlando and Indiana in a battle to the finish. And the fans in Orlando, well, they've got it all figured out. The Magic outlasting the Pacers again. Shaquille O'Neal with 39 points. And Orlando wins it 119-114 to 114 to take a 2-0 lead. NHL scoreboard tonight. Here's how it stands right now. Chicago and Vancouver tied in the third. Detroit. Trying to go up 3 nothing in that series with San Jose. And Passel's play of the day. One other note about the Nordiques' move here. The cruel irony that faces the Grizzlies. Their success story still going with the start of the IHL Championship Series tomorrow night at Big Mac. But after rebuilding pro hockey in Denver, they'll end up paying for it. Because two teams can't survive in a market this size. It's kind of a shock. Uh for everybody, for the players like myself who play for eight years in Quebec and, this, and today they have no more teams uh, left. We knew full well that when we put the Grizzlies together there was a possibility that all we were doing was paving the way for an NHL franchise to come to this town and, and if that happens, so be it. It's going to be a wild series starting tomorrow night though. They're going to go out with a bang. How are their, what are their chances? The Grizzlies? Yeah. Very good. They've only lost two playoff games so far. Great. Yeah. Thank you, Jack. Okay. Well, Polar Pals, Klondike and Snow heading for the Sunshine State. We're going to shed some light on the subject next. Driving home in a Mitsubishi Galant becomes even more pleasurable in a new Galant S with automatic transmission and the preferred equipment package. Substantial savings on air conditioning, power windows and door locks, six-speaker cassette stereo and more. Now lease this special Galant S for just $1.99 a month for 36 months with $1,850 down or purchase it with 2.9% APR financing. A special Galant package for a limited time from Mitsubishi. The new thinking in automobiles. The Thompsons got their home equity installment loan from Colorado National Bank. Not just because they could finance their car and deduct the interest, or get convenient ways to manage their money, or pay for the new addition to their home. They chose Colorado National because the bank loaned them 100% of the equity in their home, which let them consolidate their finances and their family all at once. For special rates and no closing costs, apply by phone today. For all the ways you work today, there's today's Casual Corner. 
Whether your style is strictly business or business casual, Casual Corner is the only store devoted to women who work with updated classics and versatile pieces to take you from Dress Up Monday to Dress Down Friday. Fashion that works, no matter where you work, and only at the new Casual Corner. Casual Corner, for all the ways you work today. What makes Buick Quality the best time to buy? Just listen. I shop four. Guess I gotta clean out my garage. Listen for Pam Dale's forecasts on Hot New Country, FM 98.5 KYGO. Finally tonight, Klondike and Snow could be moving to a polar paradise in Florida. This state-of-the-art exhibit at SeaWorld in Orlando could soon be their new home. It recreates the bear's natural habitat. But the deal is not definite yet, and we'll tell you if it does become definite. Okay, and that's it for tonight. We'll see you tomorrow. Have a good night. Foley's Memorial.